how's your love life going? LOL, do you even have one? What if that was my last straw? What's up you guys and welcome back to another video on my channel. Today we're gonna to be getting into a juicy chit chat get ready with me. Y'all went off with these questions on Instagram. While answering these questions, I got into this cute, flirty, spring to summer transition look. I can't wait to show you guys how we got here. So if you would like to see how I achieved this look along with getting into some of these questions, then just continue watching. So before we get into beating this face, I want to give a huge shout out to the sponsors of today's video. Thank you so much to Burnett Skin for sponsoring today's video. If you guys aren't already familiar with the brand, they are a black owned skincare brand that is on the rise. They offer a wide range of products that are dedicated towards melanin rich skin like mine. So here I have their AHA toner and this product is a non-drying alcohol free toner that exfoliates, clarifies and leaves your skin feeling so, so clean. Here I have the refreshing cloud cream which is absolutely amazing it's almost like a cream texture meets a jelly texture in one product we'll be using it to prep my skin today for this makeup look and then finally we have their overnight recovery sleep mask and treatment which is great for nurturing and plumping the skin so I will have a link down below in my description box and I do have a discount code for you guys it is to me with 15 it will be on the screen keep in mind that the discount code only lasts for the next 48 hours so make sure to head to that link in my description box check out Burnett's skin and once again huge thank you to Burnett Skin for sponsoring today's video. Now that we have prepped our skin, it is time to get into these questions. Since our skin is already prepped, I'm starting out with this NARS Light Reflecting Foundation in the shade Macau. I don't like to use too much of this. Honestly, I'm low-key running out, which is why I really do not need to be generous with it. <laughs> So the first question is, how is it playing around with your style now that you are a hijabi queen? Y'all, I've definitely had my test. I only started wearing hijab in February, so it's still very, very fresh. But I've definitely had my test, especially now that it's getting warmer outside. It's become a lot more difficult to find things that I'm comfortable going outside in. A lot of times I'll literally just stay indoors because I do not want to put an outfit together. And I know that's not a good thing. I know like if I have things to do, I should be leaving the house to do them. But I am woman enough to say that it has not been all cherries, peaches, and roses. It has been very difficult at times. There have been times where I've been on the brink of tears, times where I've actually cried, just because of how difficult it has been to find things that work and things that also still feel like me. I still want to keep who I am just a more modest version like that's all this ever really was about and I've just had a hard time still like I'm still figuring out who that version of myself is so yeah to be truthful it has been a challenge but a rewarding challenge at the same time I definitely have my moments where I'm like just really proud to be doing what I'm doing but um in the same breath like I have my days I have a lot of days. And I have moments too where I actually like miss the way I used to dress. Not to the point where I'd go back, but just to the point where I'm able to acknowledge like, damn girl, like you, you was looking like that for free. I completely forgot that I have this blue color corrector I showed you guys on TikTok and I totally forgot to use it today. Um, I'm sure this would have helped. I think it's a little bit too late to add this into my foundation since it's already like spread. Now I'm going in with my Hourglass Vanish Concealer in the shade Maple to highlight. And the next question says, how do you overcome anxiety and panic attacks? This is a very heavy question. I am not a mental health professional, so I would first and foremost recommend that you seek some type of professional help in this arena there's not much I can tell you outside of that because it's not my place but I do pray that God helps you overcome whatever it is that is causing these attacks and feelings of anxiety within you and I pray that you're able to find a professional who is able to help you you know find some grounding techniques and just ways to cope and find peace of mind because it's not easy like I feel like I should have like a separate video on my experience with anxiety because I could go on and on for hours about what I dealt with and how I dealt with it, but I do pray that things get better for you. I'm just spraying my Caudalie Beauty Elixir on my sponge. How are you handling your new family situation? Has it affected your views on marriage? This is a really good question. First of all, you be paying attention because you saw that one video. I low-key like contemplate every single day whether I should delete that video or not, only because like I just 
Just the thought of me crying on the internet is very cringe. Crying is a very natural human thing to do. Like there's nothing wrong with it. But Alhamdulillah, honestly, the hardest parts are behind me. And I feel like we're definitely readjusted and still readjusting to the new dynamic that we're in. But it's definitely affected my views on marriage. I think my entire childhood growing up and seeing like marriages around me has definitely you know molded what i think about marriage and how i view it and how i would like to approach it and things like that so absolutely any tips on finding new friendships as a young adult out of college i think the first step i would definitely suggest is that you shoot your shot i think that might be the easiest part because you know it's really not that difficult to reach out to someone and say hey like let's go for lunch there are different ways to get your foot in the door i think the most difficult thing is nurturing those friendships and allowing them to grow over time because we're not in school anymore we're not in college we're not in grade school we're not in places that force us to be in close proximity with these people for long periods of time so there's a lot more footwork you have to do as an adult and I think that's something I'm trying to figure out myself because it feels so weird like sometimes I catch myself off guard and I'm like you're doing too much like why are you doing so much and I'm like wait this is literally the least I could do there's nothing else I can do because it's not like these people are right next door to me or they're in my 8 p.m. class like it's different out here after college I definitely recommend you know get over the fear of shooting your shot because that is the easiest part I promise you the most difficult part is maintaining it and keeping Keeping it going and not psyching yourself out and feeling like you're doing something weird or that you're weird for wanting to be friends with someone. Does that make sense? If you guys have any tips of your own, please do comment down below because this is something I've been trying to figure out. <laughs> Off topic, but <laughs> this concealer blend. <laughs> there is nothing like Hourglass Concealer, let me tell you. It is a little bit yellow, I will admit. And this was another opportunity that I definitely could have gone in with my blue color corrector. But listen, it's not even about the yellowness at this point. Like, the coverage is it for me. And for someone with like, big protruding eyes like i tend to have a lot of creasing especially by now since i haven't set my under eyes and there's like minimal creasing there shucks kiss now i'm taking my charlotte tilbury setting powder and i'm going to set my under eyes and the next question is what did you study when i was in college i studied health sciences and near the end of my college career i realized that i was very unfulfilled with my major and i decided to add on a minor of communications because i realized that communication was very much in line with kind of what I do right now. I was very close actually to like completely switching my major, um, but then when I realized how much longer I'd have to stay in college and I was on track to graduate a little early, I was like, listen, I love y'all, but not that much. Someone else said, can we get a closet tour? Baby, have you seen the size of my closet? <laughs> Maybe one day when I'm rich and I have like a cute little walk-in closet with like a pack system and you know my bags lined up and things like that. Oh yeah, I would definitely give y'all a closet tour but ain't nothing to see in my closet today, I promise you. I also work in the real estate market. Work has been good. Alhamdulillah, work has been really good. I think God has definitely been working a lot in my favor because I'm learning that a lot of what real estate is, is marketing and getting yourself out there and making sure that people know that you're a realtor so that once they know and they're ready to buy or sell, they reach out to you and you are their go-to gal. And for my most recent transactions, like I have not had to do much work to find work really like everything has been under my nose alhamdulillah bittersweet with the divorce and everything there were a lot of opportunities for me to sell and buy oh i forgot to mention i'm going in with my amicole translucent powder right now too like i already have like a pretty good social network within the city that i live in considering you know my mosque and my mom's friends and things like that so i'm really really grateful for that aspect and i've learned a lot since working in the real estate market and i'm still learning baby i'm still a baby okay after a few months of wearing hijab how do you feel confidence wise and your iman after a few months wearing the hijab how do i feel my confidence is definitely at a <laughs> and um i think that is mainly because i have the opportunity to be a lot more selective now than ever before let me explain because i wear the hijab naturally men who are unrelated to me and just like 
pretty much anyone that I do not want to see me does not have the privilege to see me unless I reveal myself to them. And I think having that power, having that say so in who I allow access to me physically and by physically I mean like seeing me physically, um, it's so powerful because I have naturally over time adopted my own beauty standard and I am the standard. One. And I believe every woman should make herself the standard because everyone around you is beautiful, of course. But when it comes to self-love, like you need to make sure that you are someone you consider to be a prize. So over time, I've naturally, alhamdulillah, been able to develop that state of mind when it comes to like beauty and you know how I view myself and things like that and then the hijab just like seals the deal because I get to be selective and choosy with who I allow to see me in that way and who I don't allow to see me in that way and I think that's so important because when you just allow anyone to see you have access to you, you allow so many unnecessary opinions and voices into your space your bubble, your life, when you could just be protecting yourself from all of the gibberish that people may have to say outside that does not align with how you view yourself. And then Iman wise, it is a roller coaster, okay? My Iman changes every single day, especially during my cycle. Like those are the lowest times for me and I'm in my you know cycle right now. And it really just puts into perspective like how important prayer is because just those few days that you are off Salat, like the difference in your demeanor and your mood and your view towards like, I need like a Iman booster routine for when I'm on my period because there's no way that I just allow myself to plummet like that every single month and I know it's coming and I still don't put anything in place to protect myself from that dip so that's something i definitely need to work on but i'm definitely also very good at picking myself up once i realize i'm in a dip so i know what to do i know what plans to put into action i know what steps i need to take in order to get back up it's just like how about we create a plan that does not allow us to get so low in the first place that's something i gotta work on right now i'm gonna go in with this bronzer this is the black radiance press powder it's actually not a bronzer but i just like the tone of this press powder it's very cool it's not as warm as most bronzers so i like to use this to just warm up my face can you please make another video where you recommend black youtubers absolutely just recently actually i um privated the last two videos that i made recommending black youtubers to you guys and it was so painful to me that i had to private them but for the sake of my hijab journey like slowly but surely over time i have been privating my videos that i am not covered in and yeah those two videos in particular were very painful for me because i was like this is not about me this is about the girls that i want y'all to see and having to take those down i was like dang like those were literally the last videos i took down but um i'm definitely gonna work on one soon i want to work on one tailored towards black muslim creators first before anything and then maybe after that i will do one where i'm repeating the black creators that i did in my last videos just so that they're still able to get that visibility since i had to take those videos down but yeah i will gladly do those do y'all see how that bronzer just like set this look off do not play with her i have been riding beside this bronzer for months now in every single video I post of me doing my makeup this is probably the most consistent product in there and it's because it is just that great and it's drugstore how did you manage to stay consistent on social media while still going to uni um I didn't those were the years that my social media actually suffered the most my channel I spoke about this before I was literally losing subscribers every single time I posted and it's probably because y'all were losing trust in me because I was so sporadic with my uploads I'd go missing for three months and then I'd come back and post like four videos in the span of two weeks and it made no sense and no one likes an unstable environment period and that applies online as well like it don't matter how much i like a creator if she is not she or he is not consistent enough for me to have trust that you know i'll see them again i don't know if i can put myself out there like that and get hurt again you feel me because these what is it called parasocial relationships they're strange but Sometimes it really feels like you know the people you're watching deeply. And with that in mind, like you don't want to be in a toxic, inconsistent, parasocial relationship with your favorite creator. I've learned that personally from the people I watch. So I've taken that into account with my own social media journey. And I take consistency very seriously these days because I know that it means something to show up every single week for your audience. I've seen a lot of questions that kind of look like this one, so I'm gonna just go ahead and answer this one because it's the funniest. Someone said, how's your love life going? LOL, 
do you even have one? I mean, no, I don't, but still, ouch. She said, LOL, do you even have one? Now, sis, what if that was my last straw? I'm going with my Makeup Forever HD Professional HD Skin. HD Skin Matte Velvet Powder in the shade 4N68. I'll be so for real with you guys. I have not had interest in a man romantically in over a year now. Like real interest in a man romantically over a year now. And I don't see that changing anytime soon until Allah literally drops someone from the heavens and says, Tamiwa, this is your husband. Only because of the work I've done on myself mentally. I'm not kidding when I say that I've decentered men from my life. And I've seen only positivity come out of that because I have so much more focus now for the things I love, like my work, like pouring into me. Like there are so many more important Important things than worrying about what a man think about me and personally I just don't like heartbreak so I'd rather just stay as far away from it as I can rather than getting my hopes up every like four weeks over somebody who is destined to disappoint me so there is nobody in the picture right now and there hasn't been for a while and I like it this way because I sleep very good at night I have a lot of peace right now so yeah I, I do not have a love life <laughs> I don't have a love life for blush today I'm actually gonna skip out on liquid blush and go straight into powder blush house labs recently sent me this color fuse blush in the shade lavender blonde so I'm gonna try it out I feel like it's gonna be super cute the next question is do you feel pressured to get married um yes and no Ooh. Wait a minute. What do you guys think? In person, I can see that it's a, you know, lavender pinkish color and it's really cute, but on camera, it looks a tiny bit ashy. So I'm gonna follow up with another blush. I'm just gonna go in with my favorite blush from Sephora collection. This is in the shade Fascinated, just to kind of warm it up a little. So the question was, do you feel pressured to get married? Yes and no. On my own timing, no, I don't feel like I am anywhere that I am not supposed to be. I feel like I'm right where I'm supposed to be. That's what I meant to say. So I don't feel pressured by me, but obviously like things outside of me and things outside of my control, like, you know, family, aunties, things like that. That can feel like pressure sometimes. But when I think about what I want and how I want it, I would rather not rush. I definitely do feel external pressure. And of course, you know, my biological clock, but I don't put pressure on myself. I refuse to put pressure on myself. I mean, what, like, what does pressure do in this scenario? We know that pressure makes diamonds and in some cases pressure makes sense, but like what can pressure actually do to help me in my situation when it's completely outside of my control? By the way, I'm going with my rare beauty blush in the shade flaunt. I don't believe in pressure myself over something that I like why would I give myself sleepless nights over something I can't control you know so yeah speaking of which I just finished reading the marriage clock by Zara Rahim drop whatever book you think you're reading right now and go read that book oh my gosh, that book is amazing. It has a very slow start to it, but you just gotta get into it first, at least like a quarter through, and then you're hooked and you're like, oh my God, I need to know what's gonna happen next. It's basically about an Indian girl and she's about 27, maybe 28, but in the South Asian community, that is considered like a crazy age to not be married by. So her parents are like putting a timeline on her finding a husband. And if she can't find him in their timeline, then they are going to set her up with someone themselves. And the parents were actually in an arranged marriage and their marriage worked out. They're happily in love. So they're like, hey, this worked for us. Why can't this work for our daughter? So the book is just, oh, the book is just so good. The ending, I was literally in tears. Like I, oh, so yeah, next question. Wait, actually, what eyeshadow do we wanna do today? I'm gonna grab from my Cosmos palette. I don't know what color I wanna do though. I don't wanna do nothing crazy. Have you ever gone to visit Nigeria before? Yes, I have. I've been to Nigeria twice, first of all. The first time I think I was nine or eight. I might've been nine. And the second time I went, I was 12. I definitely need to go back. It's been awfully too long. And there's so many parts that I want to discover, especially now that I'm an adult. Like I really only got to see what my parents saw when I was young and that was family like every single day. But like, I'd want to do a lot of touristy things if I were ever given the opportunity to go again, inshallah. Qualities you look for in a partner. Must he be Muslim? He definitely have to be Muslim. Some other qualities that are very important to me our integrity. I want someone who fears God and does the right thing even when no one is watching. Someone who is respectable. People respect him and ambitious. Not too serious. I don't like 
overly serious energy or behavior. Someone who is funny. That's subjective though, because I'll be laughing at everything. So really, you don't gotta be that funny because I'll find something to laugh at knowing me. I feel like I don't be asking for a lot. It may seem like a lot only because we have such a poor selection of men today. The Tamiwa from last year, I think she would be the Tamiwa that she is today. Absolutely not. I don't think the Tamiwa from last year had enough foresight, insight or foresight. She was thinking far, but not this far. I don't just mean my hijab journey, I mean so much more. Like I mean my mindset, I mean my opportunities that I have right now, I mean, you know, my work, everything that I have in front of me, like I could not have seen, I, I could not have seen this coming. So right now I'm gonna go in with my ABH liquid liner and I'm just gonna give myself a little wing situation while I answer this next question which is tips for anyone that wants to start investing in their physical appearance I said this earlier in my video but you really 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 got to do some mental work before you start working externally because if your mind is not right it will reflect outwardly and you will do a lot of things that you don't need to be doing so it is imperative that you make sure that you create a standard of beauty for yourself that is achievable. And the easiest way to do that, in my opinion, is to make yourself your standard of beauty. It's so important to make sure that you are filtering what you allow to affect your belief system on a subconscious level because we receive so many different messages every single day through music, through social media, through movies, through TV shows, and all of those things leave little crumbs and things that pile up and create a belief system and you cannot allow that to be what you start with when you start investing in your physical appearance because then you will just follow the world and you will just try to be what all of those messages in your brain are telling you you need to be what the rappers are telling you you need to be what your favorite artist is telling you you need to be this is honestly should be a video in itself because I could go on and on over this subject but I think the first step before you invest in any physical appearance is to challenge the things you believe about beauty and why you believe them and once you've done that work backwards make yourself your standard of beauty and then from that point forward you work on your physical appearance in a way that actually complements you not what you think people want from you i hope that made sense but the girls that I get it get it okay and if you didn't understand that it's because you was not supposed to i'm gonna draw on my beauty marks like i always do i had somebody comment in one of my tiktok videos and ask if my beauty marks were intentional or if they were mascara and i almost puked do they not look intentional I would hate for them to look like mascara, y'all. Please tell me if they look like mascara because I feel like I've been so consistent with this. I've literally been doing this for years that how can it look like fallout from mascara? I'm gonna line my lips with this Juvia's Place lip liner in the shade Brownie. And this next question says, if you didn't have to live close to your family, where would you relocate? I'd probably relocate to Dubai. I'm not even kidding. Maybe not Dubai, but like, a neighboring country, Abu Dhabi, somewhere out there in the Middle East. I definitely could see myself if it weren't for the fact that I'd be so far away from my family. What did you picture your 20s would be when you were 16? Is it better, same, or different? Um, definitely better, for sure. I don't know if the vision I had was necessarily good. It was good at the time, it was good for 16 year old me. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't say that it was good. Looking back, I wouldn't say that it was good. But at that time, obviously, like that was everything to me. That's what I wanted. I am so blessed to be in the position I am. I couldn't have ever guessed that I would have been here right now. So yeah, no. I thought I was gonna be married by 18, y'all. That's not a joke. I see you laughing. That is not a joke. I thought I was gonna be married by 18. And um, don't ask me why. I just had a very deep rooted belief that that was gonna happen for me. And I am now walking into my 25th year of life as a single woman. And no shame about it, but like, what? See, like I cannot trust anything I thought about myself when I was 16 because what the heck was I even thinking in the first place? Like I had no real thoughts. No shade to my 16 year old self. I love her to death, but she just was not the best judge of character life do you think you'd ever have a modest fashion line or a makeup brand oh my gosh i haven't even thought about that god willing um it's not something i have like on my five-year plan or anything like that but it's definitely not something i would okay we just gonna let this sit for the rest of this video since it want to act up so much definitely not something i have like written down somewhere but 
if God got a ring for me, baby, I am embracing it with all four limbs. But I don't have plans of doing that just yet. Um, but it could potentially happen. I could see that happening for sure. Did you ever go to Cote d'Ivoire? Would you go there? And also wondering if you speak French. I've been there once. I was also nine at the time, nine or 10 at the time. I would definitely go there again. I have not been there since then, but I would definitely go to visit and I do speak a little bit of French. I was in French immersion school when I lived in Canada from kindergarten up until the eighth grade. And then once I moved to the US, I was just thrown into the US school system. I did take a couple of French courses because they were easy at the time in high school. But beyond that, like I have not had a chance to practice or keep up my French. So it's slowly leaving me and I wanna do something about it. I'm like, maybe I need to go live in a French country for six months or something, cause I cannot just let it slip away from me like this. I used to be really, really good. Now I still understand it, but like, let's say I watch a French show or a French YouTube video, I need the French subtitles as well. So I won't put the English ones, I'll put the French ones because sometimes they just be talking a little bit too fast for me and I need to be able to read the French words that they're saying so my brain can recollect what it means and then I do the translation process in my head. So. I do speak French intermediate level right now, but I used to be a lot better and I'm working on getting back there. For lipstick today, I'm going to be wearing this NARS Afterglow Sensual Shine Lipstick in the shade Devotion. Honestly, I've been loving wearing this on its own, but I'm going to pair it with lip gloss today. I'm gonna to touch that up with my Fenty Gloss Balm Cream in Fenty Glow, just to brighten it up a little bit and give it some more gloss. I'm going to put on my Amicole mascara and try to answer some questions at the same time. I'm seeing a lot of relationship questions still. And a lot of these questions are not just like, are you in a relationship, but what happened to your relationship or rather how are you dealing with it since you are Muslim now or wear hijab now, guys. I never converted, first of all. A lot of people think that ever since I started my hijab journey, but I've always been Muslim. But yeah, long before my hijab journey started, put an end to my relationship. That I think played a big role in my growing over the years. I'm not over the years, girl, over the months. But I think that was a necessary step within my growth journey in order to reach the next level because there are some things that are painful to think about in this way, but in actuality, they're holding you down and you need to let go of them in order to reach that next stage within your journey. And also taking like religion into play, like obviously relationships where you're not married are considered haram, AKA forbidden. So yeah, I didn't talk about it on here only because like I'm not someone who's able to talk about things while I'm in the midst of it. Like when I'm in the storm, don't ask me nothing about it cause I won't tell you. And that's just how I process. But once I have made it out of the storm, I will gladly, you know, open up and share what I've learned and like be a helping hand in any way I can for anyone who is currently in a storm themselves. But just the type of person I am, like I'm not about to be, <laughs> I don't know why I'm like this, um, but I'm not, I'm not an open book when I'm going through it. And that's just always what's worked for me. Cause look like here I am now doing so much better and I'm able to talk about it without having like a golf ball in my throat because I've genuinely gotten over it. So yeah, Tamu is single. Tamu has single, been single for a very long time, and that's what happened. <laughs> How is your micro locks doing? I love an update. Oh girl, I'd love to give you an update. My micro locks are flourishing. I'm definitely noticing um, differences from the first time I installed them. I started my hijab journey in January. I installed them in February. So yeah, since February, there's been a lot of differences. Obviously, like I'm learning that my hair grows extremely fast. I just never had the right regimen to maintain my length, but baby, my hair be growing like a weed, especially when I don't touch it because I'll do my retie today and be ready for a new retie by the end of the week. But I've just never been able to maintain my length because I'm always, you know, my hair is always breaking, but I've learned that my hair grows really fast. I'm also experiencing a lot of shrinkage, which I've learned recently is a good thing within your lock journey. I do my retires every six weeks. I would do them sooner if people recommended it, but everyone says don't go inside of six weeks. But it's been a wonderful journey. I love it here so, so much. And I can't wait to continue to watch them grow and just like transform and lock up more and things like that. Yeah, do y'all see how amazing this mascara is? I did not have lashes before this scene and now, 
like I got falsies on or something. Like, what advice would you give to a girl in high school about staying true to themselves? I would say, for one, listen to your parents. And I know if my parents were watching this, they'd laugh because of how much I didn't listen to them. But genuinely listen to your parents because, first of all, your parents, like in most cases, want what's best for you and will not like intentionally lead you astray. So I think the easiest way to get back in touch with your roots and your morals and your homegrown values is to listen to your parents, um, especially at that age, because you're not at a place mentally, physically, you know, emotionally to make certain decisions and calls for your life yourself. And to know that everything feels really real right now, like especially in high school, things feel so real. They feel so permanent. They feel so all encompassing, but I promise you, life goes on beyond those high school walls and a lot of the people that you're hoping to impress within those high school walls will be people that you look back at one day and you're like, Ain't no way I was falling for peer pressure from you. So baby, do not listen to them people who are trying to lead you astray in school. Just to prove that you're cool, just to prove that you got it. Um, it's not worth it. It is absolutely not worth it. You'll look back one day and you'll be like, why was I in trying to impress these people? Um, so yeah, listen to your parents and embrace your differences. Embrace the things that make you quirky, that make you weird, that make you different, that make you stand out. Because those are the things that are going to set you apart and lead you to your destiny one day. Please take it from me. Those are the things that are going to be a catalyst in your testimony. I'm gonna go into this Too Faced palette. I'm gonna take this super bright, like almost white color and put that in my inner corners just to brighten this up a little bit. That was a little bit too much. Oh my god, it's giving Barbie. Yeah, we're doing white eyeliner in the in the waterline. Just gonna put a little bit, not too much. I don't want to look like a rag doll. I think if I extend this wing a little more though, it'll look a lot better. Do you feel as if people make fun of you for your YouTube channel? I don't feel like people do, but I'm sure that there are people in the world that think what I do is cringe, how I talk is cringe, how I look is cringe, something about me is cringe, because there is no perfect person in the world. One man's treasure is another man's trash, and it's inevitable to escape that. Like, there's always gonna be somebody who thinks you're cringe. There are people who think Beyonce is cringe. There are people who think Nicki Minaj is cringe. There are people that I think is cringe. Like, I cannot... <laughs> what next? Like, you know, like, what do we do with that information? You cringe and then you move on. So there are probably people who do make fun of my channel, but I don't make my content for them. So it really does not affect me, bother me. We really don't do nothing to me. I'm gonna ask, what do you think about non-Muslims wearing headscarves like hijabs? I don't really think I have a say in what somebody else is out to do with their head top. If a non-Muslim wants to wear a hijab, that's really amazing for them. I see why they'd wanna wear it, considering my own experience with it. Um, so I don't think it's a problem if someone wants to wear a hijab, if they don't like believe in Islam or are not Muslims. Like hijab is not exclusive to Muslims. There are other faiths that also practice things that are very similar, just modesty in general. So yeah, people should be allowed to wear hijabs if they want to. Honestly, like seeing how it has positively impacted my life. I want this for everybody. Listen, don't let me become president because I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't see a problem with it. And the people that do try to get keep hijab, like I just think that's a little bit weird. Like, cause hijab is not exclusive to us, simple. Modesty is not exclusive to us. Headscarves are not exclusive to us. And if something is beneficial to you and has a positive impact on you, why wouldn't you want other people to also benefit from that thing in the same way, you know? So yeah, no, please wear your hijab if you want to. Or if you know somebody who's wearing it, let them wear it. Now I'm going to spray my face with this Milk Hydro Grip Setting Spray. This spray is great for melting down your powders and making your face look like skin worn, that marinated makeup look. And now to seal it all in and make sure that my makeup lasts. For a while, I'm gonna use my one size mattifying setting spray. Listen, you could go swimming with this though. The only thing is the smell, like the smell, I don't even wanna get into it. I need to invest in some like nose plugs for every time I spray this, cause it is just unbearable. Ooh. All right, I'm gonna answer one more question. And that question is, do you ever get scared that your content may become 
repetitive? No, no, no. I don't think about this often or at all, only because as I'm evolving and I'm changing, I'm vlogging. I'm making videos like this, chit chat, get ready with me. So I'm documenting my life as it goes. So I don't see or fear that it will become repetitive one day because my life is not repetitive. I'm forever changing and I'm taking you guys along that process with me. So I think when you're authentic and you're living authentically and you're posting authentically, I think it's very hard to find yourself in a place where you're becoming repetitive because naturally you will change over time and your content will change with you. So I do not think that my content will become repetitive as long as I am continuing to grow and flourish and blossom, inshallah, um, that will never happen for me. But that is the completed look, guys. Super simple, cute, feminine, flirty, whatever you want to call it. Honestly, I think it's super cute. I love, love, love how this look turned out. Huge shout out to Burnett Skin for sending those beautiful products over that helped me prep the base for this look. I will have a link down below once again for you guys to check out. And make sure to use my code, Tamiwa15, because for the next 48 hours, that code is active and you will be able to get some money off at checkout. I had so much fun filming this video. This is probably the best to chat, get ready with me I've ever done before. And it's just really felt like a girl chat. So let me know if you guys would like me to do more of these. I'd love to do these like once a month because there are so many questions that I still do not get to answer and I'm so sad that I didn't get to them but if y'all like this type of content I'll definitely do more of them so I'll be able to get to as many questions as possible but yes I had so much fun with you guys today and I will see you guys in my next video bye guys